up Galactic Friends and welcome to a quick look into a library that could make your React Native applications a whole lot better. Today I want to show you Unistyle. Unistyles recently arrived at version 2, I've been keeping an eye on Unistyles before and it is a library that just simply replaces Stylesheet and Stylesheet Create in your React Native applications in a fast way. So you can check out the benchmarks of Unistyles, it is a tiny bit slower than just Stylesheet but it adds a ton of features to your application. It is using C++ under the hood, so that's why it's so fast and we're gonna see how to use themes, how we can use even breakpoints and media queries and variants and the runtime of it in this tutorial. So if you're interested in a way that's very easy to use, very fast to use, that doesn't require you to completely rewrite all your components, so you can really just use styles.something in the end after adding unistyles, but on top of that adds functionalities for like web support with breakpoints or theming to your application, then unistyles is for you. I've also had Jetcheck, the creator of unistyles, on the Rocket Ship podcast before, so if you're interested in more and behind the scenes, there's a link below this video, which you should check out. And of course, subscribe to the channel and the Rocket Ship podcast if you haven't done so. And now let's see some code. Alright, so let's see Unistyles in action. I created a new application using bun, it doesn't matter, you can also use npm, create expo app, I called it styles app and I used the tabs template at beta. So at the time recording I was still on the beta of expo sdk 50. Once this video comes out it's probably already stable, but I had some problems with router version 2, so with expo router version 2 and I wanted to use expo router version 3, so that's why I wanted to use sdk 50, but this is not about uh, expo and the SDK. So what you're gonna do in your project when you want to use uh, unistyles is simply run at react native unistyles. I used bun, again you can use npm as well. The important part here now is that if you're using expo, you can't use unistyles with the expo go app. The reason is simple, unistyles uses C++ under the hood in some areas and custom code, native code, which won't work in the Expo Go app by default. So you're gonna have to create your own pre-built. I've got several videos now uh, on how this works and why pre-built is really easy. It's just a command and then you can still basically run it like this. And that's all you need to know about it. Um, web support will work mostly out of the box. So let's see, welcome to Unistyles 2.0. Uh, where can we get started? So there's a simple example and we're gonna set this up now. So we've already installed this. The uh, follow-up is to define some breakpoints and define a theme. This is not required, but I think this is a good idea to kickstart our Unistyles application. So I created a folder style and I added the breakpoints, just that code from here. So this is setting up uh, the different breakpoints. I actually talked to Jacek about having these by default because many people share the same values for SM, MD, LG. Uh, he said this is by design to really keep the library small and unopinionated. But uh, on top of that, we have themes. And by the way, there's actually a portrait and a landscape breakpoint out of the box that you can use if you want to. The second file I set up is a themes file where we just define our themes. So I have three themes. I have a light, a dark and a galaxies theme to show that I think these are like reserved words and galaxies is like a custom theme. Uh, and of course you could have like just an object in here with colors, margins, any kind of stuff that you want to set up for theming your application. Now. The important part is what follows next because we need a new file and I will call this unistyles.ts and this file is now responsible for actually bootstrapping the whole process. So I will just copy this over. Um, can we do this like without messing? Isn't there like an example somewhere here? Um, okay, yeah, here's the full example. Let's copy over that one. If you love tips and tutorials just like this, you will love what I've created inside galaxies.dev. On galaxies, you will find all the code, more tutorials, and specific courses about learning React Native fast. So go check it out at galaxies.dev and use the code warp speed at the checkout to get 10% off your first three months of Galaxies Pro. Also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button below so you get updated about the new videos, live streams, and everything coming to this channel. That's better, okay. So this takes our breakpoints and our themes from the folders we've just set up and it brings in the unistyled registry. The unistyled registry is simply required to set up everything. Then we have some types up here and a module here. 
This is for making sure that everything works really, really smooth with TypeScript. And actually, it works really, really good. The only thing I notice is that we should also append our Galaxies theme in here. So I will add Galaxies and type of, oops, sorry about that, type of Galaxies theme importing from theme. So now we got our Galaxies theme as well. And already it starts, we see the benefits of TypeScript. So now I can add my theme here under a name. I will call this one Galaxies and this will be uh, the Galaxies theme. Okay, we fixed that. So now we've added our own theme. We are using adaptive themes. We will probably come back to this later. For now, I just wanna include this in my app. So again, we don't really have to use the breakpoints and themes. I just wanted to like a really easy example to quickly see the benefits. But more important is to now import that file correctly in one of your files. So if you're using Expo Router, a good place is the topmost layout file. Uh, otherwise, if you're not using Expo Router, you can put this in your app, J, uh, app TSX or JS if you're still using just JavaScript. Oh, God forbid. Um, and then we can import this from add styles slash uni styled. So add styles should work because the TS config in my project should be configured to have these paths with Expo SDK 15. Nice. I'm really happy they made this the default again and I don't have to manually add that. All right, and that's everything we need. Let's try to run our app. So the command was bun x expo run uh, iOS. And that should hopefully work because I already did the pre-build before. Let's check out this file. Uh, yeah, expo pre-build. So you gotta do this if you haven't done it before and then expo run iOS and you see, ah, that's great. Could not be found in the directory. That's probably because, um, because I probably actually have to do another pre-build uh, as I added the files. And if you do pre-build, I usually recommend to do clean as that will wipe out your folder. And then we can do another NPX Expo run iOS in a second again. Do you sometimes just look at this build and think, who has developed all these files? There must be a person who has written all the RCT GIF image decoder dot FM RCT legacy view. <laughs> oh my, so many files were dependent on. I'm happy that hopefully in a second everything comes together in a good way. Well, it kind of did. The only problem was the name of the folder is actually <laughs> style and not styles. So I completely messed up again myself. Make sure you import from the right folder. I don't know why I didn't get any TypeScript warning. But now we do have an app. I will also press W to bring up the browser preview using uh, Expo Web. Because I think this is one of the coolest things uh, about Unistyles. And how many messages are I going to get today? I don't know. But anyway, let's see. Um, we are at this point not yet effectively using Unistyles, but we can do this. So if you want to quickly get from um, using style sheet to using Unistyles, these are the steps that you want to take. Let's first simplify this view a bit and uh, let's remove some unimportant stuff. Like let's get rid of the separator. Yeah, more messages. That's a great day. Okay, so I'm in the index file here of the tab bar. I'm on tab one. What we want to do is we now change the name here to style sheet and then we replace style sheet create with a with a function create style sheet from react native uni styles. Now this is complaining and to fix this we will create our own styles object in here using the use styles hook and we're going to pass in our style sheet. So that's why I renamed it down here because after renaming it here, I can use the name here and then I can continue to use styles in here. It's like the least, um, yeah, the least hard way to do it. And you can easily replace this and let's hit save and congratulations. We are now using uni styles here in our application. In case your application is crashing, then you're probably not using it, but if the application still shows up like this, you are using uni styles. Um, can we confirm that somehow? Um, how can we confirm that we're using uni styles? Probably uh, if we use like uh, from the light theme uh, primary color and set this to what is red? This is red, right? Okay, uh, this is my primary color. Uh, let's see. I could now probably use that color somewhere in here. 
uh, as text or let's use maybe a button and color okay yeah please just import the button from react native can we use the color uh, from styles okay yeah well this is only accessing our styles and not the unit styles let's let's follow actually my example that I prepared for this so what I want to show you first is how to use the different themes um, we can do this now by let's say adding a background color down here so a background color to our container and how do I access the theme well we can actually get access to it by changing this here a tiny bit so that needs another pair of brackets and then we are able to use this theme object from Unistyles and because of TypeScript we get all these nice code completions. Um, right now we're using the light theme I guess. So let's see, there's actually a way if you click the or if you're using the iOS simulator at the top you're gonna have features toggle appearance which should be Apple Shift A which toggles the appearance of your simulator to dark mode and what you notice is that we actually automatically use light or dark mode. So we have either primary white or we have primary black. And we can also apply this to our title element now. So here we go for uh, the text. We could say color and use theme, colors and typography instead. Uh, and by the way, let me let me get rid of this primary color that I added. It's only messing up stuff. So now we should be able to easily switch between this and also on the web, by the way, we should have the same effect. So for the web, I will just use a toggle system appearance here from Raycast and boom, we see dark mode in action automatically. So congratulations, uh, this was really easy and this is probably one of the coolest things or the things I like most about Unistats. Maybe the, the, the biggest thing for me is that how easy it replaces stylesheet. Really, without being a complete change to my code, uh, we can just drop it in here and then get the styles using use styles. And then I can use easily themes in here or define my color somewhere. And we're going to also get to breakpoints and other stuff in a second. Um, let's see how we can also mm, uh, change this on purpose. By the way, if you don't see your app changing uh, from dark to light, check your app JSON and make sure that your user interface style is set to automatic. So this will pick up uh, the device color theme. If you don't have this, it probably won't work in your app. Now let's do this manually with a button click. So I want to add a simple button down here. Um, and this button has a title, let's say toggle theme. Or let's actually call this one set galaxies theme because we haven't seen the galaxies theme yet. So what this button will do uh, on press, we're going to use the uni, uh, uni time, the uni styles runtime. We can check this out. Uh, so we have this great style sheets, uh, we have dynamic functions, yeah, that's what you can use as well. But I want to use the Unistyles runtime. The Unistyles runtime is a host object created in C++ and it's always up to date and allows you to interact with the native side of Unistyles. So this gives us access to pretty cool features like color theme, themes, breakpoints, uh, screen orientation. And we're going to use this now in my on press. So on press, what I want to do is I will use unistyles uh, runtime dot set theme. And I want to set this to the galaxies theme and see this. This is really great. We got TypeScript support completely with this library. I like this so much. So let's see set galaxies theme. And of course, it just works. And we can now have the same button, uh, which like toggles our theme so this would use set theme and then check with the theme name if the current theme is dark or light and then toggle it so i could toggle between dark and light mode easily and again this should hopefully work on the browser as well uh where's my preview here it is okay toggle theme set galaxies theme yeah it just it just works <laughs> Oh my, I love this so much because it's so easy to integrate it. It doesn't require me to learn like a whole set of new components and uh, languages and, and whatnot. It's just like, it's easy to use it. And that's really, uh, I think, one of the key features of Unistyles. 
By the way, we can also define our initial style. So if you want to, you can go back to your uni styles uh, TS and define initial theme to be galaxies. So then if I reload the app, it would always start in the galaxies mode. Uh, or you can also, of course, change this back to light, whatever you prefer. There's also a hook uh, called use theme. I think it's called use theme. And you could probably use some logic. Where is that? We should probably look this up. Yeah, use initial theme. That's what it's called. Uh, and this one's pretty easy to use. We could have this at your app TSX or again at the topmost layout file. And you could store your selected theme in MMKV SQL async storage, whatever, to load the theme the user has selected if you have like fancy color themes uh, like many modern applications. Cool. Okay, let's move on to a few other things that I really liked about UniStyles. The next one being breakpoints. Um, let's add a simple view in here. So let's add a view element and for the style, I will set up some, some box style. Okay, let's move here, box. And for this box, what we want to use is, we want to first of all use a width of, can I just head, is this possible by the way? I don't think so, yeah. I thought this was possible at some point, but maybe it was just like, okay, that shouldn't be possible. Okay, so we got the, that box, and if I give this a background color of red, we should see a nice box appear on my screen and of course appear on the web as well. So if we wanted to make this box responsive, we can now change this to be an object and we can use the breakpoints we have defined previously in our breakpoints file. So write these to define the color. So let's say for super small devices, I will use whatever. Uh, FF, then for SM, I will use uh, zero zero F M, and then I will use for I don't know XL. By the way, again code completion here, really great. Uh, nah, nah. Okay, so we got different. Okay, so in the smallest way, we see we have a blue box here, which is the first breakpoint right here. Now let's check the web. I can do this. Uh, okay, it turns blue. It turns to I don't know what this should be. Uh, and then at some point it should turn into, what was the, the, the LG one? Yeah, I forgot uh, uh, zero here. <laughs> okay, uh, 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 uh. yes, and it turns to red. So what you notice here is when I pull this stuff, it stays blue until I like stop. Or if I do it slowly, it will actually update at some point. I asked the creator check about this and this is by design of the library. So he also said, this is just the thing that developers do. And I completely agree. There's no normal person who's doing, oh, this site is not responsive. I can't turn it like this. Nobody in the real world is doing this. This is only developers doing it. So if your app behaves good on the breakpoints, that's usually uh, more than enough because normal people don't care about this. And with UniStyle, there's just a little 100 millisecond delay here in the update, which helps to not broadcast thousands of events all the time. So. These are breakpoints and I think it's really so easy to implement, but gives our app really superpowers, especially as we move into an era where React Native is not only React Native for iOS and Android, React Native becomes possible for the web as well with Expo Router and Expo Web. So I think this is a huge step forward. Now, um, just a quick heads up on something else or a few more things before we wrap up. You can also use media queries, of course, with UniStyles. You can check this out here. Media queries. Um, let's probably add a quick media query. Uh, let's have a new view. And I will give this the styles query view. And then we're going to put in a query view object down here. Query uh, view. And we're going to use a fixed background color and width. Okay, so this is just a black box. But now I will uh, set the display. You can of course also change the colors, the width, the height, whatever. I will just make sure that this is not displayed on small devices. So what I could say is I can use MQ from uh, UniStyles and we need to import that. And then I can follow up with only uh, on width between 
min width of zero and 400. I want to use display none. And for everything else, or maybe for a certain range, uh, or yeah, let's use for everything else above 400, I will use a flex layout, okay? And we see on mobile, it already disappears. If I go back to the web, it exists. So um, can I make this any smaller? Uh, uh, that color is changing, but I feel like I can't hit it. Do I have to use a smaller one like 380? What's the minimum size of the browser actually? I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe we can also do it from zero to 500. Uh, yeah, that's better. Okay, now it works with the browser as well. I couldn't resize it to be that small. And now we have media queries and you can use this uh, also not only with width, but you could also have it in combination with height. Um, and I think this is really interesting. Um, Besides breakpoints, this is also pretty cool. If you need a responsive styling for your application, there are some more examples in here in the documentation that you should check out. And beyond that, I just wanna highlight, there's even more like variants that you can use. There were a very requested feature. Uh, you can of course have compound variants then as well. We've talked about the registry to set up our stuff and the runtime that you can always access. Again, there's also a screen orientation and breakpoints and everything that you can access with UniStyle's runtime. Content size category, which allows us to have uh, or to respect what the users on iOS are using. Um, and this is pretty interesting. There are also plugins that you could write yourself if you want to extend UniStyle. I haven't done this myself because I found all of this to be pretty impressive already, but just having the support for this and the, the ecosystem to be able to extend this library with your own plugins is really impressive. So I am very, like, very happy about this library. And that's also the reason why I decided to become a sponsor, actually. Nice, I'm already now listed here. Um, if you enjoy this library as well, give it a star on GitHub. Oh, 599. I'm, I'm pretty sure once this video is released, it's way higher. Support Jacek. Um, and maybe also become a supporter of this project if you enjoyed using it. And I'm pretty sure I will use this again in my upcoming videos. The reason is simple. It is just such a minimal replacement of style sheet that it doesn't feel very hard to use this. Whereas using another library like Tamagui and while, while Tamagui is really great in what it does, it makes the code really look different. And this code, looks just fine to everyone using React Native and Stylesheet. And under the hood, okay, I'm using a bit more, but this is what I really like about it. So give it a try, check out UniStyles, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna be surprised how well it works just like me. All right, and that's it for today's show of UniStyles. I hope you enjoyed this quick glimpse at what's possible with UniStyles. I'm of course not able to cover everything about it because then we had like an hour long video and nobody would watch, but I think this gave you a first impression of how fast and how easy it replaces the native or the default style sheet of React Native and what we can easily get in terms of breakpoints, media queries, variants and everything else that comes with Unistyles. Again, if you're interested in learning more about it, check out the podcast link below this video and also the benchmarks of Unistyles if you're interested in the performance. And of course, if you enjoy it, give it a star and support Yetchek on GitHub and become a sponsor just like Galaxies is doing for this project. I'll hopefully catch you in the next video and until then, happy coding, Simon.